Alan Green. I'm a software engineer at Speckle. The ones that have been following Speckle for a while may know of me already. Uh, and today we're going to try and chain everything that uh, Jonathan has been talking about with our Power BI data connector. So let me see if I can share my screen real quick. There you go. So for the purposes of this quick demo, uh, we're not going to do any live coding. I've already have everything assembled, uh, but I just created a very simple uh, uh, Power BI dashboard that what it does is uh, is going to give me the first 10 walls of my model. No, this is kind of like a useless query, but it's a fast one to make for the purposes of our demo, uh, which is uh, the whole point. Uh, so how does this work? Uh, in our normal way of doing things, we would be using uh, our already pre-cooked provided query that we reference in all of our tutorials, which is the speckle get by URL function. Uh, it's available as a UI pop-up that is slightly more friendly. And this ends up giving you a nice table with absolutely every object that exists in your uh, commit. And basically this referencing what Jed was talking about before, this is basically like a flatten of every single object that you, that you pushed, uh, including objects at different levels of depth. Uh, so this is ideal when you want to explore your whole model uh, as, a, as a unit, uh, but it's not as ideal if you already know exactly what you want, or you want to explore the model in more dynamic or flexible ways uh, that require you to not have to pull an entire skyscraper uh, in order to see the windows of level 57. No? Uh, so we're going to leverage uh, what um, Jonathan has been introducing about the GraphQL API in our Power BI connector. This has already been available for a couple of versions. It's just we never actually documented it properly. Uh, so uh, initially, what we want to do is we're going to start with a stream URL or a project URL, which points to a specific uh, project in the Speckle server. Uh, and then we're going to call one of our utility functions parse URL, which in essence kind of like splits down that uh, URL into its meaningful information. What type is it? If it's the server that it comes from, the ID, if it has a commit or a branch, etc. And then we also need to define our our query the, this is the graphql query that uh, jonathan was talking about and it is basically copy pasted straight away from uh, our graphql server and what this does is we're going to get the branches and for the branches we're going to get the commits and we're going to limit both branches and commits to a specific amount set by some variables uh, all of the variables that we need to set are part of are defined in our query. We need a stream ID, a limit, and a branches limit. So the next thing we need to do is we need to define those variables in Power Query. And, and we do so, uh, usually you've been seeing JSON if you're using GraphQL, but since this is Power Query, what you need to do is create a record, a Power Query record to uh, uh, contain this information. So as you can see, it has the stream ID, the limit of branches, I said I want 50 branches, and the limit of commits, I said I want the last commit for every branch. So with that information, we now have a query and uh, some variables, but we also know, because we parsed the URL of our stream, we know that the server URL that we need to uh, address this query to. So then we can use speckle API fetch, which is also a provided function of our data connector to basically execute this query with these specific variables in this specific server of our choice. And this returns, uh, likewise it does in GraphQL, it returns a structured uh, record uh, that contains the same structure as your query. So in this case, we have stream, 
branches, items, and then we have for each item, a name, a description, and a set of commits. So we, we need to operate on that in GraphQL, uh, in GraphQL, in Power Query. So from our response of our, of our fetching uh, operation, we get the stream, the branches, and the items. And then those items return a flat list of now Power Query records, which contain the description name and commits of the uh, of the branch in question. You will notice that commits is also a record that we can continue to ask information to. So we can actually convert this list into a table that will give us a better uh, representation of what we're looking at. And uh, if, you, if you notice, commits is a record that contains something called items, which is a list. So we can then also expand the information that we want from our uh, query to end up having a record that contains the last commit, which contains a message, possibly an image for your author, an ID, and what Jonathan was explaining before, the referenced object ID, which is kind of like the key to get the data out of your commits. No? So this was just a quick example to, to show you that you can do queries on your speckle data that are not kind of like the data inside your models, but also the data around your models, such as how many branches does a commit have, or does, a, does a project have, and, and what information does that contain uh, in order to do more admin level uh, reports in Power BI. Uh, but then this leads us to our original report, the report that uh, is gonna load our 10 first walls of our model in, uh, in our viewer. So let's move to a different uh, query in which we're gonna basically do the same thing. We're gonna parse the, the URL, uh, and then we're going to use the result of our previous query to connect into this query and say, okay, uh, maybe this logic will be different depending on your use case. In my case, I'm just getting the first referenced object of the first item in the, in the table. And if you've noticed, the first item in my table is my main branch, uh, in which I have a nice Revit model stored. Uh, but obviously, this logic could vary depending on your use case. And then we do the same thing. We Now that we have a, our parsed URL and our referenced object, we can paste the query that we want. In this case, we no longer want the branches and the first commit or the last commit on each branch. We already know which object we want, so we can go for this, the actual project or stream and the object within that project or stream and ask it for the ID and for its children. And in this case, here's where the, the interesting part comes in because the children, we can add a limit and a query parameter that will drive how many objects we get and which objects are we actually getting. And as we did before, we need to set a, a certain amount of variables. We set our stream ID, our object ID, the limit and our query. And notice, wait a second, I'm about to break things. Uh, I'm going to show you here. Uh, notice that in, in some cases, uh, while Jonathan was writing pure JSON in, while he was interfacing with in Chrome with the Explorer, in this case, what we're expecting is always Power Query records or lists. And it is our data connector, the one that is doing all of the conversion to JSON for you. So in this case, you just need to define your variables as a record. And if the query input tells you to provide a list of JSON objects, what you provide is a list of records. 
and then those records would become JSON objects for you. So in this case, what we are providing is a query that gives us a, for the field of speckle type. I want that the that every object that has a value of objects, built elements, uh, Revit wall, and our operator is equals because that's exactly what we want to compare. We want exactly this value, the objects that match this value of speckle type, and we only want ten of them. Uh, let me cancel that. So then we perform the same operations, speckle API fetch with our server, our query, and our variables. And that returns, again, a record with, in this case, it's no longer branch information. Now that we've requested objects, we're getting like this uh, data records uh, to them. Uh, but as uh, sometimes the, the, the in GraphQL, the data is kind of like nested within itself you can uh, actually format it into a new table where your data record contains, we've already unwrapped this, and contains all of the information that we had available for a, a specific wall. Uh, but furthermore, we can even expand this to be a full table containing all of the information that our visual is going to require, which is the stream URL, which we already had because we were doing the queries, the commit object ID, which we already had because it came from the branch, and the object ID, which belongs to each individual object. And with this information, we can then plug that into our viewer. And now our query is no longer receiving every single object in the Revit house and then filtering for the walls. Now we are just getting 10 walls, which is like infinitely faster, especially when you're dealing with huge amounts of data. Uh, anything that you can shave off of it is a, a benefit. So the result of this is basically the, the same result as uh, what you would have done previously with uh, the original queries with the get by URL, and then you would filter the rows, and then you would keep the first 10. But in this case, this would take like a second and a half to compute, while uh, the get stream branches and get commit objects together take like a third of a second or something like that. Uh, and this kind of like scales up dramatically as, as your project grows in detail and in size. Uh, so that was it for my demo today. Uh, hopefully you find it insightful. I'll give it back to Jonathan.